lovelies welcome to garden of insight so thank you for joining me thank you for returning today we're going to be looking at what am i missing so what are you missing or what are you still missing in terms of the signs and synchronicities so whatever area of your life this might end up referring to i feel like you will have already picked up on certain signs and synchronicities but maybe as you're connecting the dots, you're starting to confuse yourself or doubt the messages, or there's just a key sign that you're not quite recognising or fully digesting. So before we jump into the reading, I just want to say, particularly those that are already subscribed and wanting to make sure that they see these readings or they're participating in the channel, just jump over to the community section because I think some people are not getting their notifications and some people that have won readings are not seeing that they've won the readings. So just hop over to the community section and check that you've hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss out if you are hoping to win a reading by commenting. So you can jump ahead to the quick pick section the quick pick section just gives you a bit more time to look at the cards, but we're going to go into detail. So for pal one, you've got, I can release the past and forgive everyone. Now for you, that might be forgive a specific person rather than everyone, but take it as it resonates. And the crystal that we have with pal one is the smoky quartz. It's actually, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but it's got a little blemish, like a little chip out of it. And I feel like that could be relevant to you or someone you're dealing with. For pal two, we've got, I am safe, it's only change. And for pal two, we've got the selenite. So I am safe, it's only change with selenite. And then for pile three, we have I express my creativity. And we have amethyst. And this is not, it's a polished crystal, but it just feels a little bit, um, yeah, it's not as shiny, it's a bit dull. So that again, there might be an extra little message in there if that helps. So I'll leave you with the quick pick if you need a little bit more time and then we'll jump in. Hi, pal one. So you chose, I can release the past and forgive everyone with the smoky quartz and the smoky quartz we're not going to go into too much detail but it is um helpful in terms of cleansing away negativity so i think that there might be something in that particularly because of the thorns on this big beautiful rose but also because of that chip and that blemish that we saw on the crystal so let's see what else we can get with the other cards so with the divine dog deck we've got arrogance interesting we're already getting a message there we've got um the whispers of healing deck we've got growth with the trust your vibes we've got learn and i literally just said heard learn from your mistakes so that might be you having to forgive yourself and learning from your mistakes it might be that you're looking at someone thinking i wish they'd learn from their mistakes from Pass Around the Smile, we've got Korea. Ooh, blimey. There's a very, very big message, and it's probably for like one or two people. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, for some, it's just this sense of like, they could make a career out of it. So you might be dealing with someone and you're like, they could make a career out of X, Y, Z. And it's the negative X, Y, Z. It's the thorny issue. But for some of you, or maybe one or two, 
I heard career criminal. Now, a career criminal, that criminality, is like someone who... I mean, there's different layers to it, but it's someone who knows full well that they are doing something that's criminal and they've chosen that as their way forward because that is what makes the money. Now, that could be someone who manipulates their partners to get ahead or it could be someone who commits fraud or doesn't pay their taxes, I suppose. But, yeah, for, for maybe one or two, I'm getting career criminal and for a chunk of you, I'm getting, they can make a career of it. They're so... Um, they've developed this way of behaving that they could make a career of it in order to get ahead or in order to have a particular status or maybe they have made a career of it hmm interesting with the spirit song we've got love which is yeah it's not though is it it's um love might be used Love and loyalty might be used, but we'll come back to that. From the Tarot Mucha, we've got the Queen of Swords. And from the Light Series, we've got the Seven of Cups. And we will pull clarifiers towards the end. So, either you, in your career, which might not be a case of you're like really arrogant, but you might have to consider... What can I learn from something? What can I learn from a situation? What can, can I learn from a past decision? You know, you might have been tempted by something else and you didn't elevate as a person. Or you might have chosen a cup that you thought was going to increase your earnings or status. And maybe you're recognising it was a choice based on your ego, not your higher self, or a choice choice that you you know again to get ahead get to be above to have that hierarchical dominance even if you're not a dominant person who wants to kind of oppress others but you might want the status it's, again especially in your career and you might have even fought off the competition this is only going to be true for those of you that were I think this relates to your career now imagine if you lose your job or you feel so like a bit of a existential crisis of like what am I doing what am I doing and then you kind of put that wall up and go why did I choose this career or why am I still in this industry or why am I still working so hard at this what can I do to grow to out, you know, I, I, you know, you could even recognize that you've already outgrown the environment, and you're surrounded by all these arrogant, egotistical people in a maybe a really competitive uh, industry. And again, this could be a group of friends or family or, or a partner, and you've outgrown them. And maybe you're recognizing now that information it's dawning on you. It's like, oh, I've outgrown them. Look at that big rose, and then look at all the other ones in the basket. So for some of you, there's a recognition you've outgrown your environment. And, and if you recognize that and learn from that experience, then you can, I'm hearing leaps and bounds. Even if you're moving away from a career, even if you're moving away from a job, even if you're changing industry, even if you... Uh, yeah, so again, there's a status thing here as well in terms of you might drop down a status, you know, drop down a level in the physical. You may have to humble yourself or you may have already been humbled. I really sense that if this is you and there's a bit of a chip on your shoulder or you're realising you've been carrying the burden of something that maybe feels like a bit of a stain or blemish on your character, it's because you have or you are being called to look at it from an elevated place and not get caught up in the superficiality of the world and you've either been humbled by being knocked off your perch or losing your status and there's something to learn from that it's giving you an opportunity that's giving you the time and space to grow and elevate yourself and make better choices from a place of love not fear or 
you have to humble yourself in order to not go back into a choice, into a cycle with a person or group. And again, for some of you, it could be your career. That again, I feel like is... I don't know. It, it has a sting in its tail. There's something that feels off about it. And the thing that could be blocking you is I don't I, I don't want to, you know, you maybe you don't want to go back to school. You don't want to learn another skill. You don't want to lose everything you've worked for. You don't want to um, look, appear to others like I can already I already feel like there's some agitation out there and that's that that's not wanting to recognize that little chip on the shoulder or that blemish but remember for some of you you're dealing with this person right you're dealing with the arrogant person and and you need to not get so caught up in it that you don't move you need to learn what that's about and recognize you've outgrown that environment or that person or maybe you didn't recognize you were dealing with someone with a chip on their shoulder and in that case although it could be work it could be career it could be your business it could be a business partner it could be your boss it could be a competitive colleague and friend at work I, it could be love I, I'm I'm attached to someone extremely arrogant. They've got a chip on their shoulder. They think I heard they think their S H I T doesn't stink. And I like put all my eggs in one basket now with this person. And I guess you would if you've partnered up in in a business or a, or in a love connection. I mean, there's 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 more at stake. I'm hearing, yeah, more at stake. There's more at stake when you commit financially through a business or with a partner that then leads to, you know, mutual responsibilities with a home or with children. So, so again, even though you might be dealing with the arrogant person with a chip on their shoulder, when it comes to you moving forwards, when it comes to you learning and growing, when it comes to you leaving that behind, including the 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 bitter taste in your the sour taste in your mouth the kind of the thorny aspects of what you've experienced with that person which could be beautiful on some level as well that your ego still is going to influence you in terms of everything that's at stake it could be your reputation that's at stake it could be the the connections that you've made you know, you've got common friends or you've got loyal family or, you know, family in law. It could be um, you're the one that would lose out if you departed the business and, and sold, you know. Yeah, it's like you've put in all this work and that person, yeah, they might have the financial means to buy you out and therefore... You'd be, it's, I'm hearing like, you know, back to basics. And that might be a bit overwhelming. But, but the possibility of choosing this cup, which is going to elevate you, remember, learn and grow, as opposed to staying attached to something that is more representative of this snake and the dragon on all that glitters, you know, the, the gold and the affluence and, hmm... Let's see what this says on the back. I free myself and everyone in my life from old past hurts. They are free and I am free to move into new glorious experiences. So definitely, yeah, a sense of freedom, at least from. So I'm hearing risk as well. So there's some. So you may have also already recognised that you took a risk with a person or that there's a lot of risks associated with a particular job or responsibility or status. You know, think about arrogance and get off your pedestal and a chip on your shoulder in terms of, you know, celebrities, right? And cancel culture. Someone spots this 
unpleasant side to a person and they can call it out. And not only does the whole world watch it, but and they have this fall from grace and they're knocked off their perch, but they can lose their career. And yeah, they might learn from it, but all you know, one could argue, is it is is it worth it, you know? Is it justified to that extreme? And also, was it worth putting myself out there publicly to then have that happen? That in a way that might not be justified. So maybe it's just about modifying how you do something and recognising, oh, I still want to be in this industry, but I'm not going to take a risk and partner up with someone again. Or I still want a loving relationship, but I'm not going to take a risk. I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. Or I'm going to give it more time and learn more about that person and see where they're at evolu on an like, evolutionary scale, I'm kind of hearing, with the ladders. Before I, you know, really open up and let someone in. Are they a truthful person? And, and everyone's got thorns, right? Everyone's got some, there's some things that they might bring in from the past, or there's some unpleasant things about their character, or they might have a chip on their shoulder, you might have a chip on your shoulder about one issue. They might have a chip on their shoulder about another. But it's about, well, are they aware of that? And have they learned from that? And are they willing to continue to grow as an independent person and with me in this business, in this family, in this relationship? And also, when I'm presented with things that might be reminiscent of the past, maybe a really arrogant person, maybe something that wasn't just at work, maybe a really dominating manager who made promises they didn't deliver, right? Maybe I got stabbed in the back, right? Whatever that might be for you, have I learned enough to step into a similar environment and not, not buy into the same thing, but also not um, hold yourself back from expecting better you know you can be in certain again there's certain industries that are just extremely competitive and I suppose it might it might get to a point where you're just like well that's just that's just the way it works that people just get personal people will just mock you and put you down you know again like think about maybe a lawyer presenting their case in court and they're doing it on the for the benefit of the of, of their client but the opposition you know or polit politics the opposition's gonna get personal and nasty and there's gonna be all sorts of things exploited and splashed on the newspaper or presented to people as if you're stupid and you can't string a sentence together and, you, you know, that's the kind of environment where you can't really go in and just not have a good day. You've got to be on the ball all the time. So, again, for some of you, you could just be questioning, is it worth it, you know? And you've got to think about whatever those thorns are. Maybe it's for you, but maybe it's not right now. Again, with that humility, it's like... I used to I used to work in a in in a in an environment and with certain types of clients where you know it's it's been of service but the way that I was presenting there was a period of time where I was facilitating workshops but there was a particular dynamic within the workshops because of the clientele that was actually quite triggering and I didn't really fully recognize it at the time but it was it was triggering um a, a, a an experience around violence so yeah it, it probably wouldn't have resulted in violence or it was probably just the present the presentation of quite a, a aggressive kind of character or characters it's not like I crumbled and fell apart far from it but I was carrying you know I, I, I then was carrying a bit of a burden and I had to be like okay so I can be of service but not maybe with that client group or not in this type of environment or maybe I can do it with a bit more support around me so sometimes it's like well it's not necessarily that you can facilitate a group 
or that you can deliver that material but maybe you have to go about it in a different way or maybe you have to go away and learn a little bit more study gain more knowledge develop skills it could be conflict resolution right in that environment or communication skills or just learn about yourself and where that where where that where it's coming from maybe the past and resolve a bit of the past and then get back into it and don't and again with healing people can be a bit arrogant with that there can be a lot of spiritual bypassing there can be a lot of i'm already at a certain level i don't need to heal that i've already healed it well yes and no again with that chip i'm hearing there's some there's some little cracks and they're like of little fissures there's some there's some little weaknesses where certain things might still slip through or might start to crack open and and i feel like you have been humbled or you will have to humble yourself but for some of you even with it's when it's with another person and you're looking at them thinking they can make a career of ruining people they could make a career of walking all over people or they have made a career out of oppressing and suppressing others they have made a career out of being aggressive and arrogant that's the reason they've got ahead and influenced other people who might actually know more who might have grown more who might be more deserving but what do i have to learn from that person whether they do get knocked off their perch or not whether they have a fall from grace or not whether they learn to behave better, whether they choose to embody love more than fear or creating fear for others, what do I need to learn? Well, maybe there's a part of my ego that doesn't want to accept that I chose that person. Maybe there's a part of my ego that doesn't want to accept that I've done as much as I can in this environment and, and I, have to, I have to take the loss. It's better for me to walk away and learn from it and grow elsewhere than try and grow here because they're always going to be they're always going to want to be top dog and maybe you're one of these little flowers and maybe you're happy being one of these flowers maybe you like to work as a team maybe you like to mix it up with a different bunch and and it's like you know it's almost like she's about to, it's like she's saying it's like she's hailing this flower or she's about to bow down if you recognize that then that you know it's like rather than stay there and deal with that and, and develop a chip on your shoulder and become really defensive and again that what does that mean you start not trusting people you start expecting negativity because you're around negativity it's like spirits giving you the opportunity to elevate out of it he's pointing at the cup with the ladders that are ascending but you have to humble yourself to do that you have to take some kind of loss again in what people think your reputation it could be your colleagues right it could be other family members i don't want to deal with this character so i'm stepping away but people might not understand you could be dealing with someone with like strong narcissistic traits if you can't explain that to people and i wouldn't advise that you try because it you know doesn't work um because people get caught up in certain dynamics for so long that they can't see certain things i think it's like let people think what they think maybe in time they'll learn and grow beyond you know all hail this man or woman type of energy very interesting so what are what am i missing what am i still missing meaning you in terms of the signs and synchronicities even if it's not obvious to anyone, every, everyone, because it says forgive everyone, even if it's not obvious to everyone, this chip on this person's shoulder or this kind of antagonistic, aggressive way of approaching you, maybe. A really noisy um, vehicle or bike just went past. And again, it said, this happened to me yesterday. I don't drink very often, but I decided I fancied a glass of wine with my dinner. So I went to, I, this is relevant guys, I went to like a drive-through bottle shop 
that's what they're like in Australia. I don't know what they're like in other countries. Um, and I recognise the guy behind the counter and he's quite a softly spoken, gentle type of character, you know, good communication, customer service. But as I was just getting out of the car, this um, this guy pulled in on a bike. It was like a Harley or something. And I, I, it's not that I don't like bikes at all. I've, I've dated a couple of people that ride bikes, but I don't. It was it was really loud, extremely loud, like every, you know, every time. It was like just over the top. What I'm trying to think of a, a word to describe what that feels like. When people just are revving their end, you know, like people that have like, you know, like two exhausts and it's just so bloody loud. At the very least, it feels inconsiderate. Well, some people might think people, you know, it's someone who wants attention. Some people might think, well, fair enough if they like their bikes and their cars, but it's a bit inconsiderate, especially if it's early morning or late at night. And and also like when you when you're in an environment like that and it was like an enclosed environment, he was revving it, like after pulling in, he was like revving it, like he wanted everyone to pay him attention. But then he was just one of these characters that was talking really loudly, like almost yelling in a really deep masculine voice. And when I went to the counter and I had some earphones on, when I went to the counter, I was just kind of, I must have, I must have put, skewed my face a little bit because it was so sharp. And, and I'll get to the point. I was kind of distracting myself, like looking off into a different direction. I think the guy that was serving recognised that maybe I was impatient or something. I wasn't really impatient. I was just trying to not hone in on the sound of this guy. Anyway, he said to the guy, let me just serve this lady. And then when the guy finally left, I was getting in the car and he said, I bet you're glad he's not your neighbour. <laughs> And I said, oh, my God, I can't stand that noise. And I said, to be honest, though, I have a bit of a sensitivity to certain sounds. So some things are just a little bit shocking or full on for me. It's just one of those things. Can't, can't do anything about it. So I wasn't actually criticising the guy, really. I mean, I recognised that it was over the top and it was inconsiderate and he was making a big song and dance about it. And that this other guy clearly recognised it was a bit unnecessary or it was a bit too much for me um he would have no clue that guy would have no clue he's just no clue doesn't care and to be honest if he'd recognized it even if i'd said to him oh, i'm sorry it's not you i just have a sound sensitivity he's probably the type of person to be like not my effing problem because that's just the way that he came across i could be wrong um so my point is i just feel like the way that that bike or car just drove past and that story coming to mind. Falling on deaf ears is what I'm hearing. Yeah. It would, bringing something like that to someone's attention, it's like that sound sensitivity. I don't expect the world around me to change, but those around me or if I work in an environment, it's something that's come to my attention that I've learned over time actually gets in my way. It serves as a block to my career progression. It serves as a block to me be, being able to connect and spend time in certain environments. And me being aware of that and sharing that, the right people will take notice, right? The right people will want to consider that. They might not be able to do anything about it or change it for me. And I might still need to compromise in certain situations or, or manage it the best way that I can which is what I do, but there'll still be certain characters that are like, well, it doesn't bother me. Well, I don't have that issue. Well, I don't know anybody else that has a problem with that. Well, I couldn't give an F if anybody else has a problem with that. I do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, and there are plenty of people that do have a problem with something like a neighbour revving their engine at seven o'clock in the morning or a neighbour coming in on their bike at 11 o'clock at night and, and, you know, just making a whole heap of noise. There's plenty of people that have a problem with it, but they don't say anything because they know they're dealing with someone who probably has a chip on their shoulder. So however that little story might resonate for you, I just feel like 
it's the type of character where it would be falling on deaf ears. They're not open to it, right? You see those hands open? They're not open to it. You could be like, you could be appealing to someone like, I just, I just feel like I can't approach you or I just feel like if you could consider this or, you know, it's almost like, please. And this person's like, no, nope, not interested. Not my problem. You deal with it. Okay, so <clears throat> maybe that's the key sign. And the synchronicity is um, sometimes, so for example, losing your job or being offered redundancy or feeling a pull to go away and learn about a subject or having to confront these things about yourself that you're struggling with, they're coinciding with something else that's maybe already been happening, but you haven't wanted to address it. And now it comes to a point where it's like, well, we'll make the decision for you. Or we'll get it to a point where it's so in your face and so annoying that you know that you have to make a different choice. So what else can we get for pile one, please? What else can we get for pile one, please? Yeah, interesting. So what I'm hearing it, so you might meet or connect with someone that is on common ground that you're learning from or that's help you to, helping you to grow or help, uh, offering you an opportunity to elevate out of this situation. Again, with these kind of loyal wolves that look like mirror images of each other. But I don't think there's any, you know, what's that saying? There's no love lost. There's no love lost. There's no loyalty with this particular person. Hmm. so it yeah i'm getting a mixture of it's it's like a blessing in disguise with this surprise gift because even though there might be a loss or a, an uncomfortable shift in your life it's it's going to give you that like i said time and space it's going to give you that time and space to devote to yourself to learning to something else that's been triggered from the past, um, to something else that you actually desire to do more or that spirit wants you to devote time to. But also with this sister's kind of energy. Hmm. It just feels like whatever, whatever the, I'm hearing payoff, whatever the payoff is in terms of like the treasure by being connected to this group or person through work or whatever. Being devoted and loyal to it, whatever the payoff is. Again, it feels risky. With that sensuality, it feels risky. I'm really paying attention to the red. So yeah, red flags, it feels risky. Like buying into, that's because sensuality is pleasure and it's that kind of temptation energy. But it's a tiny treasure. It's not, it's really not worth it. Mm. And now I'm getting, you know, I'm getting those phrases around lemons and it's making me think about what I said about something sour. So, you know, maybe you have this perspective of like when life gives you lemons, make lemonade or, you know, the juice is not worth the squeeze type of thing. And I'm, I'm yeah, because the juice is sour and, and the, life the life the lemons that life has given you in this environment or with this person or group yeah I, let me just think when life gives you lemons make lemonade but it would be sour it takes a lot of adding sugar to that to make it appealing the juice is not worth the squeeze because what you will squeeze out of that lemon will be sour interesting so one last card. 
what did we get as well back to basics so yeah you might be learning you might be going to a new job where you have to start at kind of um at a lower status again um you might be having to just go back to basics in terms of thinking about the past and what you might not have resolved that you're carrying um and it might be back to basics in terms of how you view something a person or an opportunity and, and and now looking at it with hindsight it's it's telling a different story Ooh. yeah recharge there's nothing like a walk on the beach to soothe your soul but again i'm just really looking at the footprints there's there's one set of footprints it's you on your own and I kept getting time and space, didn't I? Time and space to go away and learn about yourself, about your desires, about the the direction you're taking in life, about the path you've already walked, about the people that have been walking alongside you, about whether other people have been giving you a leg up and carrying you or you've had to carry them. Again, it can also be sometimes people have more of a status, but you're the one doing the work. You're carrying them. That's why there's no footprints of the other person because you're carrying them, but yet they're getting all the accolade, right? Because they're arrogant, potentially, or some other version of that. So I do feel like you need to give yourself time and space or if something has happened to give you time and space, like losing your job or having, you know, having to accept redundancy or something like that, or having someone leave you, maybe in a quite a cutting, cold way, then... You need to learn from that. You need to recognise that that time and space or that severing is giving you an opportunity to recharge, but so that you start to take different steps in a direction that allows you to grow with or without other people, you know. So I hope that that was helpful, pal one. Please do like, comment, share, subscribe, and remember to check out the community section. Bye. Hi pal two, so you chose I am safe, it's only change with the selenite and the selenite again we're not going into too much detail with the crystals but selenite is like a, a, a charging station, you can use it to kind of recharge all your other crystals, it's also not one that you really need to cleanse, many other crystals it's advisable that you cleanse them, burying them in the, in the earth, putting them under a full moon washing them in salt water, whatever. But yeah, a selenite crystal doesn't really require that. So I'm already getting a message around the two bags. And I feel like, you know, you're moving towards another person or another person is moving towards you. But that could just be a friend or a family member. So let's see what we can get. So from the divine dog, we've got guidance. Interesting. Help is on the way. So you might be about to be of service to someone else or vice versa from the, I always forget the name of these because I can't see the book. Listen to your body with strength. So let's just pop them like that for the moment. Listen to your body and strength from the healing deck from Trust your vibes, you've got laugh. And from pass around the smile, you've got don't sweat the small stuff. I really feel like this, someone's gonna bring out the best in you or it's about time that you laughed. It's been a while. From the spirit song, we've got the six of shells. From the tarot mucha, we have got the King of Pentacles, and I've said I always pull one card. I intend to pull one card from all the decks, but sometimes others come out. And for you, you got the Queen of Pentacles, which is interesting because they're a match in suit. And then from the Light Seas, you've got the Ace of Pentacles, and we are going to pull some clarifiers towards the end as well. So again, she's carrying two suitcases. She's moving in the physical, and she's carrying two suitcases. So that could be you keeping an eye on someone and wanting to move towards them with your pentacle to help them. Or it could be someone who's watching you 
and you're like calling out for help or waiting for help or wishing help would come along and someone comes to you with help. So I feel like it might be around emotions. Now, that's not to say that you or another person is carrying emotional baggage. Exactly. But there might be something going on that's just a bit too much to bear on your own. So you take it as it resonates. It might be you're helping another person, but I'm going to talk as if someone's coming in to help you. And maybe it doesn't feel safe for you to let a person in because maybe people have presented before like they're there to help and they've actually taken. Or maybe you've got up close and personal and had these really strong bonds, you know, with childhood friends or your family or through those past life, you know, soul contracts. And you felt like they were there to bring this joy and there's all this sentimental, deep kind of spiritual element to it, but then maybe some kind of superficiality comes in and throws a spanner in the works. So it might be, your body might be telling you, this is love and abundance and tranquility coming towards you. Allow it in. It's here to help. It's here to buffer you. It's here to give you a leg up. It's here to strengthen your current position or provide strength you're already strong but it's there to help you really you know establish yourself or take root or you with someone else again you might be the strength you might be the powerhouse but it feels tricky it feels like it's it's hard for you to trust it now i'm also seeing this service dog you know when dogs have these little these little harnesses on my dog has a little harness that some of them have like little pockets on the side, almost like a camel carrying, you know, or a horse carrying extra goods. It, it's carrying the person, but it's also carrying goods. Some dogs have these little harnesses with little pockets where they're carrying their own treats and they're carrying their own ball, you know. They're carrying the bits and pieces that you need while you're out with the dog. So what that's telling me is, it's not necessarily that you are approaching a person or a person is approaching you to carry your stuff. But what I'm, I mean, they might show you how to carry your stuff, right? They might show you, you see how he's holding the pentacle up? They might show you how to plant a new seed. They might show you how to establish yourself. They might show you what you need to help that seed take root and grow. They might show you the way as some kind of mentor. So this could be a new partner. It could be a mentor at work. It could be, um, you know, like a spiritual guide who understands what you're going through and wants to be of service, right? But it's a person who knows how to be of service to themselves so that it's that, like they're a shining example. And again, this could be you. So their strength, this person's strength, is that they listen to their own body, they don't sweat the small stuff, they focus their energy on love, abundance and tranquility, they can see behind the masks, they don't pretend to be something that they're not. And in doing all of that, when it comes to their emotions, even if they're stirred up by other people, again, there's this dragon on this woman's back, they can carry their own baggage, their own stuff, in such a confident way that they occasionally can kind of hold space for other people. They've got it. I'm also seeing it a bit like a tool belt, like, you know, a man or woman with a tool belt around their waist. I'm seeing this little harness on, a, on I'm seeing like a little dog as well, not a big dog, like a little harness on this dog. And they've got their ball and they've got their chew toy and they've got their treats and they've got a little thingy of water. And maybe Maybe it's got your purse in there as well, because when you're out, you might need to buy something. You know, you haven't got a bag on you. You haven't got pockets and you thought, oh, well, there's a little zip on his harness. I'll just put some loose change in there. Or I'll just put my card in there. And maybe you're carrying your phone and your car keys, but you've put your loose change in his little harness. And, you know, it's not it's not too much, but it's, you know, convenient. And again, because that little dog is capable of carrying everything else on that little harness, it's not a big deal. And again, I feel like that's who you're dealing with, someone who's like quite able and willing to be of assistance, but they also don't disempower you 
by doing that. They empower you to carry your own stuff. They show you the way. They lead by example. They're a shining light. They're a shining example. You might look up to them or you might just be watching them and thinking, should I engage? You know, should I should I invest my money in that life coach? Or should I plant my seed with this person in a business? Or should I plant my seed in the foundations of what we can build together as partners? And will I feel disempowered by them? Or I feel like they expect too much of me? Or will I feel like they embrace my strengths? I, I do believe that they will. I, I really feel like this is someone who's got the best of intentions. So going back to that whole um, selenite energy, this is someone that recharges themselves. You or them. This is someone that recharges themselves. So they don't want to do for you in an in a in a way where they're stuck carrying your baggage up the whole time. They they're able and willing to do that as and when. And maybe they're the type of person that would ask for that rather than just expect other people to assume. Maybe they're the type of person that would say, when they need it, which might be rare, I can't hold this up for any longer. Can you take it out of my hands? You know? And, and at a certain point, you would be able to do that. And maybe not even, you know, maybe you'd be so attuned to each other as well that you'd be able to sense it. I feel like this person's feeling a bit burdened. Well, I, I feel like I can take the lead right now. But yeah, that selenite, it's like recharging yourself. But you, at the moment, you don't feel safe or whoever you've got your eye on that you want to step in and help, they don't feel safe. Because the change is not so much the getting the help or the, the change is the joyful approach to it. There's no resentment, there's no bitterness, there's no like tip for tat, there's no, well, I did this for you last week, why aren't you doing that for, you know, there's no um, putting on a smile and actually seething in the background, there's no pretending to be something that you're not, there's no empty promises or future faking about what could be built here, there's just the best of intentions and the desire to show up in the way that they would want someone else to show up. So I really don't know who this could be in your life. S someone that maybe there could be loving feelings or a soul contract or, or, or some connection from the past. I mean, you could be like brother and sister and you're going, you know what I mean? You could be like brother and sister and it's like, well, yeah, I can carry your bags and help you through this. But, you know, only till you're back on your feet again. Oh, yeah, you could, you know, it could be parents and it's like, well, yeah, you can come home if you're struggling, but, you know, you're a grown man or woman. So as your mother or father, I'm willing to, you know, help you out. But don't forget the position that you are in and and that you can get back into that space again and continue to move forwards, carrying your own stuff. So let's see what that says. I cross all bridges with joy and ease. The old unfolds into the wonderful new spirit experiences. My life gets better. Yeah, so you might be going through a bit of a turbulent time or there's a few bumps in the road and, and you're already a bit worn out and you can sense that there's still more to come. Or again, you are watching and sensing this with another person. But when it says joy and ease and you've got joy down here well it is joy and ease when someone's there to help it well it's easier with that support and assistance but it's also joyful you know like i've been in some dire situations um and the you know maybe the friend i lived with at the time was also going through it i remember when i'm you know i came to australia on a student visa and I was like the only person that spoke English as a first language. It was a sensible pathway to living in Australia. But the government changed the rules. And then, I, you know, I was, I was, to some degree, I was at an advantage. And I accept that. There's a privilege in being white and speaking English and stuff like that. But in many other ways, I was at the same disadvantage and taken advantage of by the system as everybody else. But maybe I could communicate clearer or understand you know the mechanisms of the government because they were similar to the UK and things but 
yeah, it's like we just, we could be like sat there talking about things and researching things and being absolutely exhausted and being like, what are we going to do? Like, what are we going to do? This visa is going to run out. What's the best pathway? But we were, we had a lot of laughs as well, just just like almost laughing at ourselves and each other. And we ended up going in different directions. We ended up moving to different states. You know, so it's like, well, want to help each other get ahead and plant new seeds. And I can see what you need to carry your stuff forwards and you can see what I need to carry my stuff forwards. And it's really sometimes it's like not a, it's not a laughing matter. This is serious stuff that we trust each other. We have this experience, this nostalgic, sentimental connection, and we want the best for each other. We want each other to be safe and strong moving forwards so how do we not get caught up in the injustice of it all and see it as an opportunity and help each other that's an interesting example spirit brought through for me yeah so there is a bit of a pulling of the heartstrings i'm sensing because of how you know the connection that you might have with someone again like i said brother or sister for me this was like my most my closest two friends in australia at the time um could be parent child it could be you know you've worked with someone for years and years and years hmm so why why wouldn't you feel safe? Maybe you just in general don't feel safe moving forward, but you feel safe around that person. That's why they're the one coming in or you're the one coming in. But maybe it's that it's a new person. And in the past, that type of energy has let you down. So now it's like, how can I trust that? Am I safe to trust that? As long as you don't give your power away and as long as you feel like this person is empowering you to get ahead or to get back to the version of yourself you were before, which maybe they maybe it is not only strong, but maybe, you know, sometimes some people look up to you and they see you as a really strong, confident person. And then when you have a bit of a dilemma in your life or you've got a bit of stuff going on, they're the one that recognizes for you, this is small stuff like you can handle this. No problem. But because you're struggling, even though they may look up to you and think that you're the, you're in a position of power or you're stronger than them or you take care of yourself better or you carry yours and other people's stuff in a, in a, in a, with more joy and optimism than maybe they even do. I feel like You might be their like safe harbor. You might be the person that they come to offload. But if the shoe is on the other foot, then that would example why you can trust this person, why it's safe to be vulnerable and let them take the lead or let them show the way. It's because they actually do recognize and appreciate and value your own unique strengths. yeah so let's see what else we can get i don't i i i want to read this guidance a little bit yeah so you might just be a bit overwhelmed or a bit confused if you fetch this card it means you've lost focus or have arrived at a fork in the road and could use a whistle call or pat to help you stay on track with your dreams goals or visions exactly help you stay on track and it's going to be harder to stay on track if it's been a bit of a bumpy road it can be challenging to keep your eye on the ball without a guiding paw to help you along your way few if any have stayed the course without another to help show them the ropes or the behaviors most likely to lead to desired results so again it could be a mentor or a guide showing you the way showing you the ropes or it could be someone who already knows that you know what to do but they just want to support you and remind you of that. It says, and remember that when you remain open to guidance, you honour a gift that keeps on giving. So there's a couple of things. It's like someone who maybe recognises your gift or you are a gift and they want to help remind you of that. 
or they are a gift. It's safe to allow them in because they are a gift and they've come along at this time or come back around at this time because you're, you're worthy of receiving that from them. Maybe because you give it to them as well. But even if you don't give it to them, maybe you give it to others. You're of service to others and they're showing up to be of service to you. It's like a pay it forward situation. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have tit for tat in relationships, right? It doesn't have to be transactional. If you offer support and strength to other people, it comes back around to you, even if it's not from the same person. So I really do feel like you, you need to let this in. You need to let this support come in. So what are you missing or what are you still missing in terms of the signs and synchronicities? Well, if you look closely enough, I feel like you'd recognise that where it's coming from, it's always been there. It might just be that you haven't needed to access it for some time or that it's a person that maybe you not you normally help. So it seems unlikely that you would need their help or want their help. But, you know, it's almost like, you know, a, a parent looks after their children from being in nappies, right, to whatever age. It depends on the parent and child. But then when they get older, it's like, oh, I don't want my child wiping my bum or I don't want you know them taking care of me but it might be like well I don't want you in a care home so I'm gonna have to do this um, and I want to do this and I want you to let me do this you know so there's something there's something that you can see if you look at it from the right perspective you can see that it's just a switch in roles or that these roles always do switch that maybe you feel a bit more vulnerable at the moment and therefore it's hard to see that this person's not offering you anything that you haven't offered already or that you know or that you don't offer in the world I think that's what you're missing and that and also that whatever your status is even if you're normally the one being of service whatever <laughs> whatever way you normally do that, in maybe quite a successful way, materially or physically, or in terms of your standing with others, people might have a lot of admiration and respect for you. You're not falling off your throne here, right? You're just... This could be a major change in your life, like a death or you're moving... I mean, I was talking about migration. You could be moving overseas, you know, to navigate that, it need, it requires help. I mean, if you've got all the money in the world, maybe you can, you can organise everything alone without needing any help. But you've got, money's no object, right? You could just rent an Airbnb and live there for two months while you're looking for a rental and you don't have a job. But otherwise, you need help. You, you might need advice. You might need to talk it out with someone. You might need a place to stay with a friend in a new state or country. You might need a job that sets you up in a in a you know with accommodation for a month until you find accommodation. You might need a loan to help you. Yeah, I don't know. So what else can we get for Pal Two, please? What are they? missing or still missing in terms of the signs and synchronicities they've been receiving and again there's something here about feeling into the safety if you feel safe around a person trust that and if you feel burdened by something don't pretend that it's not an issue especially if someone else spots it and asks you about it. If someone else spots that you're feeling burdened, don't feel like you need to show up and be like, no, no, everything's fine. Don't worry, I'm all good. Look, I'm doing well. And then someone's like, really? Really? You, I, I'm a bit... I, it doesn't. That doesn't feel like it. And again, we can have patterns of that where we're like, oh, no, it's not a big deal. And maybe it really is a big deal. Maybe maybe there's a lot of things going on at the same time. So what else can we get for Pal 2, please? So 
So I just heard lucky catch, lucky catch. And I'm seeing like something like, you know, almost like a Frisbee, you know, like a Frisbee being thrown and it's way too high for the dog or it, it's in the wrong direction and there's no way the dog's going to sp sprint quick enough to catch it. And now spirit's bringing it to my attention in a different way, almost like throwing something in a haphazard way and it's potentially going to hit someone. But, you know, you see these videos where someone's hand just comes out and they grab it right in front of someone's face. And it's like lucky catch. So it's a lucky catch. It might. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it seems like a lucky catch, whether you do this for someone else or they do it for you. It, it does or will feel like a lucky catch, but really it's not. Someone sensed something coming. Someone saw something coming, even if you didn't. And it's like, I'm going to stop that before it bashes him or her in the head. Or something comes in and you jump and catch it even though someone might have thought oh god that's way out that's too high for you or that's you're not going to be able to catch up to that but <clears throat> but again i feel like it's almost like someone's behind you going go for it because they're trying to remind you that you're more than capable and you you're underestimating yourself is i'm almost getting like you know You've done it before, you can do it again. And that might be, you know, progress on the career ladder or it might be open yourself up to romance again or it might be go off on an adventure. You've done it before, you can do it again. Just try and then you surprise yourself by catching it or someone sees something or senses something that might be a danger to you, not because you're not strong but because you're just vulnerable in that area at the moment and because they love you they want to protect you from it so you don't want to be like you know if you sense someone's hand coming in front of you you don't want to be like seeing that as a threat a hand right in front of your face because if you knocked it out of the way then you'd get bashed by the ball right yeah look You've got playful, innocence, bubbly, light-hearted, kind. There's nothing dangerous about that. This is that beautiful six of shells, six of cups energy. There is nothing dangerous about that. This is someone who loves you. This is someone who wants the best for you. And again, if it's someone, you know, we've got that message about, um, I just said learning to laugh again. It's like it's been a, a while since you've been able to laugh like this. And that could be that type of friend where everything's falling apart and you're just cracking up. And I mean, yeah, just making jokes of yourself, of them, you know, just almost like a bit of a dark humour, but it's light hearted, you know. Or they just bring that joy into your life and you already know that you feel safe around them. So therefore, even if you look a bit naive or vulnerable, this person only sees you through innocent eyes. This this person only wants the best for you. That doesn't mean that they think that you're childish or incapable. And then you've got green, which is healing and growth. But again, I, I'm getting more this heart-centered, unconditional love. We got that with the last reading. There was one of the piles. I can't remember which one, but one of the piles really emphasised unconditional love, I think. It's unconditional. I think it was it, whatever pile it was where I was talking about soulmates um, in terms of, um, you know, like childhood friends and, and things like that. There was an energy around unconditional love and I'm getting that same vibe here. There, there is no condition to it. This person, you, you know, you, this person holds you in their heart. Your high value, you know. Your energy is high value. Your friendship is, um, valued. Your energy is positive to them. So even if you're going through a negative period, or you're feeling a bit more pessimistic, or you're feeling a bit more burdened, and you're not the life and soul of the party, or you're not bringing in joy and laughter they can bring it into you and you'll remember it again quite easily it's a very healing energy to be around so 
And I think it's mutual. Yeah. Fresh, youthful, summery. It's, it's a refreshing change to have that energy come in or to reconnect with that energy or to remember that energy within yourself. But it's also... I, I do feel like for some of you, there's a fresh start going on in your life. There's a big change and a fresh start going on in your life. And this is one of those times in life where you really do need to accept that you're not weak by needing support. You're not weak by needing support. And if, if you're the person wanting to be of service, that's what you share with that person. To me, you are high value. You bring me so much joy. I do not see you as a negative person. I think you're positive about change. I think you're positive about life. I think you're positive about the people around you. And you've been of service to me. So let me help you. And I'm now I'm getting that help me help you from Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Help me. He's basically saying choose me as your, um, I don't know what it is, sports. It's like a manager, right? Choose me because I can help you. But I can't help you unless you choose me. So help me help you and consider how would you feel if the shoe was on the other foot and you wanted to show up for me and I wouldn't let you? Would you feel like I didn't value you? Would you feel like I was, you know, that per that might be what that person needs to open up to you and let you in. So one more for part two, please. And even if your connection or friendship or dynamic has always been about joy and fun and play and maybe not that deep, although I think it probably has been, it doesn't mean that they can't be something deep, uh, you know. So maybe it's been a bit more superficial and this is getting deep. That's OK. Maybe this is a person you're supposed to develop that depth with. Or maybe you normally just have laughs and go out. And even though you talk about things you're still generally both in a good place and happy and, you know, but that doesn't mean that the friendship, for example, is taking a negative turn just because one or both of you is going through a negative time. So you've got opportunity. You will prove yourself and discover if you brave the rough seas. But again, I feel like the rough seas is, is the emotions like coming up to the surface through this change that you almost don't want to be exposed but i'm seeing i'm seeing those lightning strikes as these roots if you can't be open with the right people about this stormy weather whether it's turbulence in the actual environment whether it's so many things up in the air that you're juggling whether it's just how you feel within emotionally because literally everything in your life is changing Especially, you know, like if you were, like I say, migrating or divorcing or, the, you know, every, everything that you've built would change. Even your support network, your foundations, you know. If you can be brave enough, courageous enough to share that or open up or just accept someone's seen it and you're like, yeah, that's true. I am. I am going through it a bit. I'm not really even sure if I've got a pentacle to you know, if I've got a seed to plant. And even if I do, I, I no idea where I'm going to plant it or I know where I want to go, but I don't know if it'll still be alive. You know, I don't know if it'll still be viable by, by the time I get there. This is an opportunity because that other person might be like, oh, well, I know how you can transport it safely to keep it alive. Oh, well, I know how you can get there quicker so that you can plant it within a week instead of within a fortnight, you know? Or I'm, I've got all the right stuff so that even if it's a bit dry when you make, when you plant it, it'll be revived really quickly. I know that's not the best example, but yeah. So it's also an opportunity to maybe overcome where you didn't feel safe with someone before or where you were let down before or where you did have to carry somebody else's baggage. I mean, you might be carrying the bur like financial burden of, you know, like again with divorce, the cost of that or someone getting you and you into debt. And it's like, oh, well, I know how I know. I know exactly what to say. 
don't let those creditors chase you for that money. You didn't, you didn't buy anything with those credit cards. I can show you. I can show you through that storm so that you're not left with just this one pentacle. You've got 10. You might lose a couple, but, you know, you might have to forgo a few, but you won't end up, you know, you won't end up with nothing. You can have a fresh start without losing everything, for example, you know. So I hope that that was helpful, pal, too. Please do like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the community section. See you next time. Bye. Hi, pal three. So you chose I express my creativity with the amethyst stone. I did highlight that that particular amethyst is it's a polished crystal, but it's a bit dull. It feels a little bit dull and it looks a little bit dull. So you might have felt like you've lost your shine or you might just feel like you won't stand out in whatever creative endeavor. Now, creativity could be creating a product. It could be selling something that you create. It could just be creative expression or the creativity involved in developing something, a business idea. But maybe you're being guided and you're sensing this is something that you need to create or this is something that you need to put out there. But you feel like it's not stand out enough or it's not um, sparkly enough or it doesn't measure up to other people or that you've actually lost your shine. OK, so we've got with the Divine Dog Deck cooperation better together with the healing deck which i've forgotten the name of today we've got self-love interesting yeah that's interesting with trust your vibes you've got stay in your own skin that is very interesting literally she's naked there it's all skin and then pass around the smile. You've got be fearlessly you. From the spirit song, we've got the magician. That's interesting, especially with the amethyst. And it says creation. From the tarot mucha, you've got the ace of wands. Wands are all about action, but they're also about creativity. And then you've got the four of cups with the light seers. And we are going to pull some clarifiers towards the end as well. So... You see how the cooperation card has the wand? Right. But that's you. So I think that's you cooperating with spirit. With the um, infinity symbol and the magician. And, the, and it's also one. So it's a new journey. So whether you're repeating something that maybe was unsuccessful before. Um, maybe you got criticised for it. You know, watched, judged, criticised. Or just... You feel like you're not good enough. This self-love and I'm getting self-worth. You're all huddled up, kind of. You're protecting your most vulnerable bits, right? You're not exposing the aspects of yourself that could be connected to sensuality. And sensuality is creativity. So you're, you're being guided to have the willpower to create this, to create this business or to put something creative out there. But because you're not appropriately working with yourself, with your higher self, right? And with spirit, right? You're, you're in that energy. You're, you're disappointed, disillusioned. You might be regretting something that you created in the past and gave away. You might be regretting not taking this opportunity earlier but it's coming in from the divine and look how magical and colorful it is so i don't actually think that you're focused on something that's not working or that you're focused on something that you don't want i don't think you're focused on anything i think if anything you are focused on that but you just don't think you're worth it or that it's going to work i don't think you're caught up in something else i don't think you're you know drinking from all these other cups going oh that's going to work or oh, that's going to work i think you're disconnected i think you're equally almost not looking at certain things in the physical so things in the physical that might have temporarily gratified you 
or that you might have got caught up in and thought, oh, if I create that or if I do that or if I go out there in that way, it will serve me or I'll feel good or it will at least make me feel better. I don't think you're buying into that anymore. However, what you've seen, whether you've done it before and it's worked or whether you've just never been able to grab the bull by the horns and, and, and work with it, I, I, you either don't see it or you see it and you're, you're doubting it. You're doubting you can do it again or you're doubting that you're worth even trying. And it's really, it's such a shame because again, willpower, better together. There could be someone in your life, I suppose, that you could work with. But I really do feel like because it's a stain your own skin and you feel disconnected and you're not trying to appease yourself through other things. There is, a, there is an element of like you can engage with the world on a more superficial level without being superficial. Do you know what I mean? Like if you feel really disillusioned in life and you pull back from everything, maybe because you feel vulnerable, maybe you need to recognise, well, what would, what would be like a bit of a lifeline at the moment? As long as I don't buy into it, as long as I don't think that going on this day is going to lead me to meeting the one and having it all. Or as long as I don't do this job thinking that's going to get me somewhere when the past has already proven that it won't or it won't satisfy me. But could I still do that job? Or, you know, can I connect with a particular group and recognise that I may or may not ever meet a deep, you know, like a, I may or may not ever go very deep with the people that I meet. I might form friendships, but they may also always feel just kind of a bit superficial, just acquaintances. But can I do that without feeling like I'm cheating myself out of or lying to myself or letting other people, you know, almost like get away with taking from me emotionally when they can't go to the places that I might want them to go to. So let's say it's a spiritual deep kind of approach that you have to life and you just think <clears throat> if I'm going to connect with anyone I need it to be someone who's on my on my level let's say or on my page well I mean you could go to like a workout class and meet people and feel a genuine connection over the fact that you do Zumba for example without needing to spend time with any of those people outside of that class and without needing to get into anything deep and that would still be a lifeline to not hiding away and shutting yourself down. And it would also be an, something that you can drink from that opens you up to this. If you're, you know, it's like, well, it's, it would inspire you to do more things that you love rather than dissuade you from it. Does that make sense? And that might be a way that you can be better with other people if you're cooperating in a way that you know brings out this expressive, creative, colourful side that you just get to a place where you're giving to yourself and you're loving yourself or you're learning to love aspects of yourself that open you up rather than denying everything. Because there is fear here, right? There's this there's fear around what you want to create moving forwards or how you want to express your creativity. And it is a gift from God. It's a gift from the divine that will be extremely fulfilling and self-nourishing. But you're, you're not looking at it, you know. You're turning away from it. You're, you're, you're looking past things that could be beneficial in the physical, that could actually replenish you. I'll, I'll, I'll give something to you. You've seen beyond what isn't really particularly fulfilling. Or you've seen beyond the things that you can get caught up in that instead of opening you up, make you feel like you have to protect yourself. Because you've either bought into things that haven't played out 
in the way that you would have liked before or you've enjoyed them but there's still been something missing so for you what are you still missing or what are you missing in terms of signs and synchronicities that the thing that's missing is this self-love and self-worth that allows you to truly honor this gift and this gift is to create something that's yours or to be more creative in the world you're you're missing the self-love and the self-worth and the self-nourishing to do that but to do that on a level that actually does feel deeply rewarding don't look past the opportunities in the physical and like hide away because you're looking at the kind of magical, mystical world or you're on a spiritual path and it's like all oh, the physical stuff maybe feels dense and a burden or you can't connect with someone in the physical on the level that you're now maybe awakened to. And the people that you have around you, you might not feel like you can fearlessly express that. So you're just not expressing at all. It's like you're keeping it all in the closet and doing things behind closed doors. But you can, how can you be open and free and share and express in the world if it's behind closed doors? So it's about that balancing act of, again, what can I do? Even if I don't talk to anyone at Zumba, even if I just walk in and go, hi. <laughs> You're in a room with other people caught up in that expressive playful colorful energy and then what does it do for your mind and your body right and your soul to move and shake in that way and i'm just i'm just using that as an example because i was looking for zumba classes the other day so it's like could could you do that and then just a little bit, bit by like like petals opening on a flower, a bit more open and a bit more open. And you might, you know, someone else might just be like, oh, what are you doing at the weekend? You know, let's say you're really spiritual. It could be, did you, what are you doing at the weekend? Oh, not much. Did you hear about that psychic show that's going to be on in the neighbouring town? Oh, no, no, I didn't. Are you going to that? Yeah, I'm going to that. I, you know, and it could be someone who's like, oh, I've, I've got a stall there or I sell these products are, um, you know, my favourite clairvoyant is going to be there. You know, that's just an example because, again, we've got this magical energy and I just feel like for some of you, what you're creating or what you're expressing in a creative way could be more about your purpose. Um, but it's just an example. You don't know who you're going to come across. And, and again, that doesn't mean that that person you're necessarily going to become best buddies with but you might be able to support and encourage one another with this wand that's going to move you forwards or it might be the first person that you open up to about an idea or a plan of action or it might be someone who actually gives you an idea or vice versa but yeah this this is troubling me because whether you're male or female i'm getting a male female vibe here because that looks like a woman and that looks like an elk which in many um decks is often like the father masculine energy and and again it's on some level i feel like it's the feminine side and it's the creative sensual energy that's all closed off and hidden in the closet because of masculine energy in the world that can be very judgmental of that vulnerable, softer, intuitive energy. All scared of it. But then it's also, I know what I want to break out and express, but I have to step into my masculine energy and use my willpower, male or female, to do that and, and to drive me forwards. So my masculine and feminine energy has to be balanced. And as above, so below, I have to work with the spiritual signs and my higher self in the physical. But I also have to have a balanced approach and attitude to the physical and the spiritual and to my masculine side and my feminine side. 
So I feel like we need to have a little bit of a read of this one. If I can reach the book that fell on the floor. It's called The Whispers of Healing. I don't know why I always forget the name of that. So it says, and I did say disillusioned, right? It says, you might be feeling downhearted or melancholy because you haven't fully grasped how to appreciate who you are. The ability to truly love yourself complements your capacity to fall in love with others and the world as a whole. Self-love means acknowledging the light within yourself. You are a sacred part of the mystery and miracle of life. So it's essential for you to not neglect and negate this spiritual, intuitive, feminine side, right? But you can't also only recognise it and give it your time and attention in the private. Maybe you need boundaries and a sense of safety and security to be able to stay in your own skin when you're out in the world. But you also need to develop like a protective barrier that you can carry with you in order to harness your masculine energy and step out there and shine whether it's shine your own light or express yourself in a certain way or whether it's create something create something or do something creative that other people it, it's the it's valuable because it's you saying or doing it that's why it's valuable so you can't you can't you know, she's got her head up. She's got her head high. Hmm. It says, perhaps you have struggled to rally esteem, respect or love for who you are. Maybe you were looking outside of yourself for validation. You may expect friends, family, a partner, co-workers or your bank account to provide you with your sense of worth. And I did say self-worth as well. This expectation leads to illusion. What did I say? Disillusioned. The truth of who you are is inside you, always. You are unique. You have your own process and you need to be yourself. Yeah. Her nakedness emphasises her vulnerability in the process she's going through. The stag supports time taken alone. Mm. But the stag also supports the father masculine energy. And that is who takes the lead in the physical or with the physical steps. So you've got to like get to a place where your masculine side is is embracing your vulnerability without judgment and criticism, but your feminine side is allowed in the mas allowing the masculine to protect and you know hold space and take the lead in the physical. So yeah, it's time to become fearlessly you. This is the most powerful step you can take toward living your best life. Don't worry about what others think. So again, for some of you, you're worried about what others think. That's why you're staying in the closet. You, you've been judged before, maybe for expressing yourself a certain way, or you've been criticised as if like your creativity is not particularly special or unique. Or it just hadn't developed to a certain point and maybe you were not giving yourself that time to progress. That's part of the process is to learn and develop as you go. Um, or this is so new, stepping out in this way or expressing in this way or creating in this way is so new to you. You just don't know what the reception would be. You don't know how you would be perceived because it's so different. And even if you are quite balanced and you've integrated, you know, masculine, feminine, light and shadow, actually putting yourself out there might it might be the first time you've ever done this. And even if you've got a reasonable amount of self-love and self-worth, it's still a bit daunting, right? My unique and creative talents, abilities, sorry, my unique and creative talents and abilities flow through me and are expressed in deeply satisfying ways. Yeah, so maybe it hasn't been on demand before, in demand on before, or you just can't imagine it because it's so different or you've just never done something before. But again, there's a choice here. There is a choice. And the choice not to 
create, the choice not to be creative, the choice not to express yourself creatively. That, that you are, you could, it's like you're splitting yourself in two, right? It's like you're, it's like you're putting yourself in the closet and turning the light off. And if someone else turned the light off, you don't have to stay in there in the dark. You can let yourself out. And why do other people diminish your light? Why do other people try to diminish you? Because some people, instead of recognising that, you know, what's that saying around um, candles or flames, lighting other flames? You know, like a candle coming along and it's it's lit and then it, it lights another flame. There's one about um, putting out someone's flame to make yours seem brighter. So it's the, it's the type of person that's afraid of fearlessly being themselves that would want to judge and criticise someone else. It's not because they're different or they do things differently, although that can be ignorance. People just can't perceive something that's not normal to them as valuable, so they criticise it and judge it. But even when people do that, deep down, what's annoying them and triggering them is that regardless of whether it's normal regardless of whether it's socially acceptable regardless of whether everybody else is doing it regardless of whether it's um in demand or not there's something about a person that's so unique and colorful and high vibrational and brave that when they show it off the person who isn't that or is afraid to show that of themselves wants to contain it wants to squash it wants to stamp on it don't let them if there's a particular person don't let them especially if it is more of a hierarchical authoritarian figure or someone who thinks you should follow suit again the the shadow of say the elk with Kim Kranz, I think, talks about being dominating and judgmental. I could be wrong, that could be the wolf, but what I'm getting is this vibe of like um, other people following suit, doing it the way it's always been done or doing it the way someone else does it. No, do it your way. And now I'm getting that song, I did it my way. You'll be glad. You'll be glad that you did it your way. It doesn't mean you can't cooperate with anyone in the physical doesn't mean you can't be open. Do it in a way where you feel safe, especially choosing things that you're not necessarily buying into the fact that if you invest your time and energy, something's suddenly going to be different than it was before. But what you're doing is picking and choosing the cups in the physical that will not only sustain you, but support and encourage you to really embrace this cup. Not things that will divert your attention away from this cup, and get you to just invest more and more and more and more. So again, for example, let's say you wanted to start your own creative business. Let's say you're a seamstress or something, or you're an artist. This might be part of your purpose, and it might come from a very spiritual place. You're channeling as you sketch, or you're, you know, you've just got a creative eye, and you want to make something for others. You want to dress others, maybe, right? clothing so that does that mean you have to just quit your job no but you might have to change jobs to give you more time or you might have to move department so that you're not under a particular manager or you might have to go from full-time to part-time or you might have to say to yourself I'm not going to go above and beyond and invest thinking oh well that might get me a promotion and then I'll have more money and then I'll be successful and then I'll be happy you say to yourself, I'm going to do what the job requires of me and nothing more because every other bit of time and energy I've got, I'm going to invest in this. That's how I'm going to cooperate in the physical and in the spiritual. That's how I'm going to cooperate in terms of what's already in my life and what could, what I could create. So like I said, with like Zumba, for example, it's like with your time outside of a job, 
How are you going to invest that? Well, do things that bring joy and happiness and encourage you and get you to feel, you know, expressive on some level or invest in the things that are going to build the skills and talents to create your business or to express yourself. You know, it might be going along to one of those um, speaking groups. I forget what it's called. Um, but you basically learn how to do public speaking. Um yeah, I'm still not going to change anything because I don't feel confident to express myself. But I'm going to spend my time outside of work going to this group to learn to express myself. So what else can we get for pile three, please? So remember, the missing element is your need to develop self-love and self-worth but also that the value in what you bring when you create something or when you express yourself creatively is what's unique about you and not everyone's going to appreciate that but that doesn't mean that it's less valuable than someone else and everything's in demand yes some 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 things that are created in the world, there's a lot of competition around it. But if it's truly, you know, it will be in demand on some level, but it might also take time to grow because that's 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 what happens. Yeah, you got wisteria, which says romance enchant. I, I don't feel like that's romance with a person at all. I don't. I, I think this is, it's you like buying into this. Um, it's not, it's like, don't look at this potential and this thing that makes you feel good and really speaks to you and really connects with you on a core level. Don't, don't look at it as like whimsical, you know, allow that to kind of enchant you. And, and, and that emotion and connection that you feel, like caught that, caught that. So yes, there's a bit of a warning. You don't want to just be all idealistic and not have your feet, you know, planted on the ground. But how, how often do we romance other things in life and get tempted to buy into things that really, it's just the appearance of something or the idea of something we buy into the potential and we invest so much and it's like I'm never gonna they're never gonna I'm never gonna get promoted in that line of work or I know that person's just selling me a dream or I know that what I get by investing this time and money is it's taking a heck of a lot from me to get that and we neglect this because we go oh, that's you know Castles in the sky, you're away with the fairies, you know, don't be silly. We can take it the other way where we get so caught up in this. Like I said, the spiritual, that we we hide away from the physical and we don't see the value anymore in courting people, places and things in the physical because we're disillusioned. Or it's just not as enchanting anymore. But that doesn't mean you can't, you should look past how cooperating you've got to have that balance between being idealistic and getting caught up in the romance and the enchantment which can be being away with the fairies or investing too much time and energy in something that's not realistic and then recognizing the benefits of working with certain people places and things that encourage and support you to really be able to stay in your own skin but also step out and shine in your skin. Because whatever's enchanting you will be enchanting to others. Maybe not everywhere, everyone, and maybe not immediately, but it will be. Mm. So I, I, I feel like I could, you, you just doubt in your own value or you've lost sight of your own value. Divinely provided, overcoming limits. Again, I'm just picking certain things that seem relevant to this. Overcoming limits to reach a goal around something you want to create or you tried to create before 
or something that you express. You're, so spirit's trying to like foster this depth of self-love and self-worth within you by providing you, supplying you with this insight and with this love and with this support and with this encouragement and with this enchantment to give you what you need to embody and embrace who you really are have this protective element around you as you step out in the world and connect in ways that support a bigger goal but also believe that you're worthy of achieving that goal and you're more than capable of overcoming limits that either other people impose on you or that you've bought into before through like the physical world, the matrix, you know, or through parents or through the glass ceiling or whatever it is. Yeah. Like-minded supportive teamwork, win-win. Like-minded supportive teamwork, win-win in terms of cooperating your higher self, your physical self, spirit and you. But also other people. They might not go the, the distance with you and they might not see exactly what you see or they may not even look at life and all areas of life in the way that you do. But in certain areas, there's that friendly, like-minded approach or there's just that supportive and celebratory good on you. Even if it is going to Zumba and at the end of the class, you know, high-fiving someone because you got through the class. And then you're driving home thinking, that was fun. She was nice. He was funny. You know? And then it what that might be exactly what spurs you on to be like, come on, let's 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 do something with that energy. So one more card, please. Pile three. I just heard it's never too late as well. So either you might have gone around trying something a few times or you might be a little bit older and, or you might be so far into a particular relationship or job that you think it's too late to go back. But I'm hearing it's never too late. It's never too late. <clears throat> Reflect. Peer into the endless ocean and see what peers back. So you might have to reflect on how things didn't work in the past or what led to this disappointment and disillusion. You might have to look at yourself in terms of why is it that I'm feeling so limited or the, or what limiting beliefs have been put upon me that I've bought into or, or literally looking at yourself like you, maybe you should do some mirror work, you know, or some affirmations in the mirror. Because some of you might have so self-love and self-worth comes from a deeper place. But sometimes it shows up in the way that we see ourselves physically. I'm not attractive enough or I don't look like I expect certain people in this industry to look. Or, you know, I'm, I'm older now and I don't think I'm going to be as appealing to a certain audience or to a certain type of person. But even if it's not more superficial, like issues with the way that you look, mirror work, you look into your own eyes. The eyes are the windows of the soul, right? So you're looking at yourself on a deeper level and, and maybe identifying where that lack of self-love and self-worth comes from, but also affirming and supporting what spirit's trying to support, which is get enchanted with yourself. And I'm also really focusing in on the word peer. So you might be comparing yourself to your peers. To Whether that's your tribe, you know, whether that's people of the same age and what they've, the milestones they've achieved in life, or whether it's your peers in terms of, well, I want to be a designer. And when I look at my peers, they didn't start at 40 they started at 20 or, um, you know, they had all these qualifications behind them and I don't. But maybe they had qualifications behind them and they 
started creating when they were 30, maybe you've been creating since you were 10 because you were taught by your grandmother or something and now you're 40 and you're like, God, I've got 30 years of experience. So do the qualifications really matter? So yeah, there's something about peers. But yeah, you might be needing to do some mirror work and then it says take the helm, be in control of your own ship. You're on your own ship, expressing yourself in the world and you need to take the lead with that. And there definitely was that masculine and feminine energy there. So I hope that that was helpful, Pile 3. Please do like, comment, share, subscribe and don't forget to check out the community section. I'll see you next time. Bye.